Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Brett Bauman. He is an award-winning business coach, best-selling author, and life coach. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about his secrets, what he's using to help folks really, truly transform their lives. Now he has immersive action mastery retreats and he also is doing one day breath work and transformation retreats known as the breath house. So he's got some really cool stuff going on and he just has some really amazing insights into what gets folks to actually make change that is sustainable and beyond going to a retreat, beyond going and taking a course, I don't know if this has ever happened to you. A lot of times you get done, you've got great info, and then you're like, wait, how do I incorporate this in my life? Brett's a guy that can help you to do that. So let's introduce you to Brett Valman and learn all about how he is helping folks get real sustainable change. All right, let's get on with the podcast. Hey, Health Junkies, I have Brett Bauman on today, and we're going to be talking about retreats and ones where you get stuff done. And that is something that, you know, when when we dive into the self-help world, we can read all the books we want, but really just at the end of the day, taking that information we learned and putting into action is incredible. And that is where Brett comes to play. So Brett, welcome to the Health Fix Podcast. Thank you, Janine. So glad to have, uh, to be on here. And thank you so much. Congratulations on all your success. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a fun podcast, labor love for me. And I can't believe it's like 440 episodes at this point. It's like, yeah, that's amazing. Good for you. Where, where did it go? Where did the time go? So of course, when I first get to know folks, I always like to kind of take a wine back and go, okay, business and life coach, you know, most of us don't wake up and go, that is what I want to do at three years old, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I want to go back to that time frame. What did you want to be when you wanted, when you were a kid and how did you end up becoming a business and life coach? Yeah, it's funny. Cause you know, I was a kid, I had a couple of things I wanted to be. I want to be an astronaut when I was really little, but as I developed into like, even just the earliest years, I started doing like a lot of entertainment when I was younger. I was doing like theater and plays and doing modeling and um, commercials and TV and stuff and kind of progressed through that. I even went to college and studied acting and psychology. But um, when I was doing it all, to make a long story short, um, it was such great preparation for the life I'm in now because I realized what I really enjoyed so much about like the entertainment industry and acting in particular, it was not necessarily being on the stage and having to have the glamour. It was that somebody would hand me a role, hand me a book and say, here's this character, figure out how they tick, why they do what they do. And I'd get to, you know, didn't matter where the play started, I'd go back in time and I'd think, about where'd they come from? What made them think like this? What, what events in their life turned them into the person that brought them here to start this story we're telling? And then there's the story of how they interact and why they make their decisions and what they'd be feeling in that experience and then where they would go from there. And I realized that that was amazing training for what I do every day because I have these incredible characters show up to me out of the blue and they say, here's my life story. And I'm here right now. And this is the tragedy I'm living in, or this is the drama I'm dealing with or the comedy. And can you help me to make sure that the last chapters or the next chapters are great? And so I have to go back and help them learn about their history and then unravel that and, you know, see why they're making the choices. And so I started there. And I also, at the same time, I had a two pronged kind of life. I was doing the entertainment. I was also a very young age doing like sales training and kind of like almost like management consulting without knowing it. I was just really good at communication and sales. And so I would get into stuff and I would help people develop call centers and insurance companies and mortgage companies. And I was just training people to be better at communicating with other people. And then uh, I realized how much that just started to come together and become one thing like, wow, this is really a coach. I'm really a coach in the mindset of performance rather than any specific, specific you know, uh, industry or tool or widget that's being sold. Makes sense. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. for, I mean, just taking the analogy of being an actor and all of the different roles that we all play in our own lives and, you know, multifaceted roles and things like that, you know, some of mm -hmm. us could be getting, you know, Emmys for our, our portrayals and others, you know, they can, like you said, a, a true kind of tragedy. It's, it's fascinating to become connected with people. It's one of the things as a doctor, I like too. you know, that connection mm -hmm. and being able to, to communicate. But when you get to that level of looking at someone's life, 
and helping them to move forward. I mean, this is where the the stuff is, right? Because yeah, I can give someone an herb or a medication and, and they get better, but like you are making change. And so this is where I, you know, I interview a lot of folks who are life coaches, a lot of folks who are business coaches and, and kind of a combination of two like you are. But the difference that I see with what you've got going on and what I was like, ooh, that's really cool is that you're focusing on retreats mm-hmm. versus this is my book, this is my, you know, proprietary program. And so mm-hmm. I can see now this connection between you liking to make connections with people and in the moment. Yeah. When when did you first do a retreat? When, how long ago? How long? Have well, you been doing? I've done a lot of events. I've done some other people's retreats where I facilitated or gone. I've done a lot of corporate retreats. I've done a lot of things where I've gone and done a one or two day event at a company and things like that. But my first retreat that I did the way I wanted, that was this fully immersive retreat that was moved away from corporate and was more about mind, body, and spirit and went deeper into you as the person was last year. Um, you know, I've done tons of motivational speaking events, things like TED Talks and stuff like that, where you're on stage or a company brings you in for four hours, eight hours to talk about whatever their business is going through. But that's so different because you're given kind of a box to be in. And this was like, no, I'm going to come from my ideology, my dogma, and share my kind of approach to fulfilling your life and passions and what I call the ideal you, which is figuring out your ideal version of your life. Like I said, mind, body, and spirit. So last year in uh, November, we went to Tulum. We had 28 people, including my team, that spent an entire week at a private resort that was totally ours. It was like about five acres in the middle of the jungle. It was unbelievable. Wow. Wow. One of the experiences of my life. It sounds incredible. I mean, you know, one, having your own resort to yourself, always cool, but also having that time where there's no distractions whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Because I find, you know, as my solid, you know, busy entrepreneur, easily drawn away from like one thing to the other, mm-hmm. of course, you know, lifelong and, and really in the last couple of years trying to figure out how do I, you know, create a space for me to not be pulled in so many different directions. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, a retreat could help me develop the skills so that I'm not chasing my tail every day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's so powerful about it too, Janine is, you know, I always like to innovate things. Like for me, I look at something and I instantly say, how can I differentiate? How can I evolve that thing? Not just how can I just duplicate it? Mm -hmm. And so I've done a lot of events myself where I've gone to them and been, you know, a participant and experiences and a lot of coaching. I've just been training forever about like 20 years worth of this. Uh, And so I was like, what's missing for me? And what was missing for me was two things. The lead in, like how you show up at the experience, at the retreat or the event and what you do to integrate afterward. Because most of the time there's not much lead up. The lead up is like a bunch of newsletters or emails. Just you got to read it yourself and interpret it. It's stressful if you've never been there and you're going through something. You just feel anxiety about getting it right. And then when you leave, you're like, I learned this stuff. I'm a whole new version of myself. What do I do? And so like with my retreat with Action Mastery, that's my division where I do my events. Um, Mm -hmm. What I did last year for the retreat was I coached every individual uh, one-on-one for two months leading up to the event. So before they even got there, they were already transformed. I mean, this is self-proclamation. They were transformed, changed their lives, improved their health, had a business plan, were organized, focused on what they want to do in every area of life from clear to relationships to health and fitness, spirituality. It was They were already dialed in. And we did some group coaching together so they could meet each other. So rather than coming up and being nervous, being at the event, like, oh, I got to meet all these people and feel uncomfortable and vulnerable, they showed up and were hugging each other the first second, crying, I I got to see you, I'm finally getting to meet you. And so it brought this momentum, like this kind of like, you know, a runway to go into the event. And so then we got to go deeper with the work. So we're like, let's get rid of the comfortability and questions. Let's get to where we show up and we're excited to be here. We hit the ground running and nobody wanted to leave. But the hardest thing about the entire event was I couldn't get people to go to bed at night. I'm like, we got to go to bed. We have to get up tomorrow. Nobody wanted to stop. Nobody ever wanted a day to end. It was amazing. We cried every single day. I had men, women, you know, in their 30s, 40s, 50s, every single day crying and hugging each other, telling each other they loved each other, and we just never stopped. It was wow. extremely powerful. And I believe it was that preparation to put them in that space to be to be accepted, to be loved, and to feel that they could be to honor who they are and get what they wanted without being judged. That's important. I mean, I'm thinking about I'm going, yeah, there's not really besides a few group programs I've done over the years where we met consecutively with the with the intention of doing a retreat at the end. Usually it's Mm -hmm. like, oh, we should all meet up, you know, kind of thing. It's yeah, it's, it's not been the intention. I can see how powerful that would be in terms of people maybe, you know, 
seeing each other over time, linking up maybe outside of calls until yep. you get to the end point. Now, did you vet certain people to make sure it was going to be a good cohesive group? Yeah, great question. Everybody had to go through a discovery call because I was looking for a couple of things. Number one, I had to make sure it was the right fit for me to be working with them. Mm -hmm. Number two, I had to make sure they were the right fit to match with the group. I have like several modalities I take people through to understand where their perspective is on life and where they are on their life journey. So I didn't want somebody to come in who never meditated before, didn't understand it, was like, uh, had like a, you know, a resistance to doing some of the work and then have people that are really far along with it because they would hold each other back or they would push each other. So they had to be in a similar kind of bubble moving forward. Um, that was most important. And then I wanted to make sure that um, the timing was right for them, that in the journey, they were going to be able to open up and explore they want, the way they wanted to. And like I said, the great thing about it was by doing that, I already knew that going through the two months of coaching ahead of time, that when they got to the retreat, the retreat would just be a celebration. Like mm -hmm. instead of having to pack everything into a week and feel like I got to get everything out of this week, it's like, no, they got there. Like the work's done. You're going to go deeper, but you've already accomplished so much that now you get to come here and imagine where you're going to go when the pressure is off. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. People just showed up like I've already, it's already been extraordinary. And now we get to start. So that was really, that was really cool. Very powerful. Absolutely. Makes sense. It, it's one of those things, you know, I'm looking at it going like I've had the work done before. So yes, celebration, better time to connect de you know, all the, all the, let's say layers off maybe is a good way to put it. Okay. So a lot of people are probably thinking now like, okay, Brett, that sounds really cool. Um, what's what's going on in the in the work before and then okay so you're in Tulum you no one wanted to leave and no one wanted to go to bed like what kind of what kind of things are you up to in yeah. your program so when we do so all of my work is based around a trademark process I have called the ideal you and so basically what it is is there's kind of two two focuses we have for the work which is number one is what's the vision like where are you going what's the dream and the other is your peak performance how you show up each day because you can have an amazing dream and it can be very specific and dialed in. But if you don't perform as your best each day, you're never going to get there or you mm -hmm. cause yourself to keep getting off path and like go through obstacles and problems and don't build momentum to getting to that vision. So I help my clients discover their passions. That's the unconscious drivers that make them who they are. So it's the most important things in your life that fulfill you. And when they're there, they're the, the benchmark of like, this is how I be fulfilled. This is how I should choose goals, et cetera. So that's the vision. And then I teach them a daily routine, how to perform their best every day through things like breath work and meditation and efficiency and organization and mindset and emotional intelligence. So it's, it's really priming you as a person to be your best every day. So that journey is the most fulfilling and you get the best results. And we look at each area of your life. We go through career, relationships, health and fitness, personal growth, spirituality, and hobbies. So it's a whole life holistic approach, making sure that not just talking about business because then your relationship's falling apart or your health's falling apart. Like it's got to all harmonize. So that's the work we do all the time. And depending on where we're at in the process, whether we're doing it one-on-one, -on -one, whether we're doing a retreat, I take you through segments of it and we're able to just build more and go deeper. With a retreat, we help you get the entire map together. So before you show up at the retreat, you know what that is. You know what your ideal is. You can tell me your ideal. This is my ideal career. This is my ideal life. This is my ideal relationship. It's very clear and you're already making progress on steps to make that your life right now, to make it, you know, execute it. Mm -hmm. And you're also performing way better. The performance piece, I typically, two to three weeks, my people have transformed their life and performance. They've gone from emotional thinking and stress and overwhelm, unbalanced, poor communication with their partner, um, bad decision-making, that's gone in two to three weeks. Like they're radically mm -hmm. changed. And they are in a place where they're self-detecting. So even though I'm here for them, they're able to catch themselves step back and make a choose a decision rather than reacting and just, you know, acting out on something. And so then when we get to the retreat, we deepen that work. When we get to the retreat, it goes deeper and it becomes more about your calling in life, your purpose, your spirituality, which I believe is the higher accountability, right? It's tapping into there's something more than me mm -hmm. out there. And when I'm when I'm on my own and it's just me, if I tell you I'm going to do something, I go home and I sit down on the couch. Who, who's going to who am I accountable to if I don't follow through and do those things? Right. Like and connecting at a higher level, understanding we're all one We're it's about love here. It's about being kind with each other. It's about helping your, your fellow neighbor, you know, and so we go deeper into the purpose of life and making impact. Now that you know who you are, and what the ideal is, how do you get in touch with accountability so that you actually stay true and authentic to it? And then how are you going to use that to make an impact in the world? So we collaborate is, you know, figure out how we can make connections between the right people. Like you said, I, I would curate a certain group of people that I knew would come there and become lifelong friends and they could join businesses and ideas and support their nonprofits and their 
whatever their ventures were. And that's exactly what happened. Wow. Wow. That's got to be fun to see that come to life because that's one of the things that you don't, you know, let's put it this way. A lot of folks promote that you're going to have great networking, right? There's going to be great, but I never have really seen it be so amazing. Maybe two or three people really connect. Maybe I connect with one person, but. Yeah. Yeah. Almost 30 people. You know, the crazy thing is like, I, I mean, this was my dream and I'll tell you, this was an audacious goal, but I'm so proud to say this. And again, I, I thank God for this. This is no ego. I'm like, I can't even believe I get to do these things. I really, I wake up every day. I'm like, I'm am I still doing this? But I, I told everybody, I was like, these are two goals I have because I felt they were, I was called to make this my purpose of doing this. And they're big, but I was like, I wanted every single person to tell me that number one, they had truly transformed. Because too many people throw that word around and say it all the time. And I, I don't like to do that. I'm very authentic. If I say it, I mean it. But I wanted everybody to say to me, I transformed my life. I'm a different person. I can tell you and I can measure the difference. And the other thing was, I wanted them to tell me that that experience in Tulum was either the best or one of the best experiences they ever had in their life. And every single person, including my team and including the people that were running the, the area down there, we had like, you know, we had staff that worked with, they all said the same thing without me even telling them. Every single person came up and told me that. So that was, I mean, I can't even put words in a way to articulate it. I cried so much. <laughs> I was, so, excuse me, I was so happy, I had so much fun. But man, I cried so much. It was just so empowering and so inspirational. And people, people that never loved themselves and had never realized it, people that had never felt accepted. People had never been seen, people that were going through rough times, businesses that had closed, uh, divorces happening, and showing up and saying, this is one of the greatest experiences of my life, and this has healed me, and going home different. And the crazy thing I'll tell you, Janine, is we still talk every single week, most of us every day. They're still talking. I have a WhatsApp group, and people won't stop. And so it, it created a bond between these people that is unbreakable. That's incredible. That's incredible. I, I, you know, and, and the fact that they're still talking, that's pretty huge too, because I think yeah. a lot of times, you know, you'll connect with someone and then the retreat's over and you're like, bye, you know, yeah. and, and then there's nothing, nothing left. What do you guys do besides the WhatsApp? Do you guys still like meet? Is the program like ongoing forever? How, how does it work? You know, after the retreats, what's, what's the maintenance plan? Yeah, great question. So we do have a WhatsApp group. We also have a Facebook page. It's really good. Um, and so the Facebook page is where we use our primary communication right now because it's so, uh, there's a lot of other things they do and they all filter through there. Okay. So we have a group in there. We do chats in there. We share resources. I have these, Facebook has these new things called guides where they're basically, um, conversations you can have. And mm -hmm. so like I have a guide on meditation, one on breath work, one on good books to read. Basically it's a place uh, where you can go and there's a, a library of resources. So you can tap into all these things to learn about what's going on. Also, I have an event calendar of things I do all the time. So I every single week on Monday mornings, I do a free um, morning meditation at 7 a.m. Pacific. And I have a bunch of people jump on and stream it through all my all my social media pl uh, platforms. But I spend about 30, 40 minutes and we set up your week. We set intentions for the week. We meditate. We talk about goals. We have a, a theme for the week and a challenge to make sure everybody is focused and holding each other accountable and being inspired. And then every other week, I do online breathwork journeys that are free. Uh, you know, like an hour long breath work journey. So I have a lot of free resources like this. So everybody keeps coming back and plugging into those to make sure they're staying in the work and staying disciplined. Um, and then beyond that, we do check-in calls. Like we're doing one next week. Uh, we get back on and do a follow-up post integration call. So there's a lot of integration. I really, I check up with everybody basically every two weeks I have, but really with most groups, it's usually about like once a month mm -hmm. for a period of time. And like, you know, usually after like three or four months, everybody's pretty good. But this group, we're so connected that it's easy to do because it's just still like friends. And many of them are still my clients. They've been my clients for two or three years. So pretty yeah. amazing. It is. And and having the integration, I think this is something that, you know, a lot of people are coming on to really realizing that there's much more to us than just, you know, think your way through something, grind it right. out, you know, get yourself to the point of burnout. And then, you know, then what? Change careers. Um, mm -hmm. so <laughs> I think we're, we're realizing, people are realizing that, but I think what's, what's not happening is like you had said, a lot of people throw the, the word out, like I've been transformed this and that. But then when you really look at the integration process, there are some seriously missing keys. And this is where, you know, I found the your program is interesting because you've got, like you said, the beginning, then you've got the retreat. Now you've just described to us kind of the, the aftercare, if yeah. you will, and that department. Um, 
when you're going through your own process, right, of, of discovering you and, and creating your ideal you, did you find that there was a particular area, you know, I know you had said kind of in terms of retreats, what you kind of found, oh, that, you know, I need, we need to switch that up. What did you find in terms of integration where you needed the most support there in terms mm -hmm. of the whole process? That's a really great question. You know, um, how to, how to distill this down into a couple things. Um, so mostly what I found was engagement level. You know, I found the most, I've changed my business in, over the past 24 years a lot because I realized that in order for somebody to really make a change, it's a lifestyle change. And so the thing is, your mind never shuts off. So the self-talk that's going on, the behaviors that you're dealing with, the environment you're in is, is, is consistent. So I've got to find a way to make myself consistent or to make the work consistent for people. So one of the things that I do, and I've developed, I've also developed a coaching app. But I have all these um, all these events that I do. So I keep showing up each week and providing opportunity for people to plug back in. So there's not too much time in between when you do something. There's, if you're having a problem, plug in. There's two or three calls a week you can do. There's resources you can do. I'm constantly putting things out so that you always have that lifeline to go to. And then I have a coaching app I developed uh, that my clients have put them on. It has tools and stuff that keeps them engaged again. So I'm always putting in new modules and updates on resources. They can join and go through a new 90-day program with different content. And so it's really just making sure that there's still after work that equals after care, because otherwise, you know, you can learn something. I always say there's like a concept and execution, right? Like I could have my sensei come from my you know, dojo, come over here and show you why you would do this move. If somebody came after you in an alley with a knife at night, you'd be like, oh, I get it. I see that. But like, great. Get up there. The guy's coming at you with a knife <laughs> you know, and you're not going to do it real well. So the execution's not in. So we have to continually define and refine with disciplines the execution. And so sometimes you can come out of experience and say, oh, my God, that changed me. It did transform me. I've, I've learned something new. I see what I need to do. And it's like, how do I do it? You got the answer. Now, how do I make the answer work? And so I want to always continue to provide people with so many resources, support through engagement and new resources to keep them inspired, to keep learning and uh, pursuing that routine and that ideology. Mm hmm. I can't tell you how many, even like as doctor trainings I've went through, oh, that's really awesome. I get heaven. And I'm like, I have all this knowledge and I have no idea what to do with it yep. or how to implement it or how to incorporate it into like my, or create my daily ritual of yep. care. <laughs> yep. Crazy how that happens. So I'm guessing within, you know, obviously you've got the aftercare. I'm guessing within the, the initial part of your programs, you're also working with folks individually, like you said, on going, okay, these are the areas you need to focus on. Like kind of giving them the tools and then molding it to them. Am I understanding this correct? Yeah, what I always tell people is, you know, I say, look, I don't have all, all the answers for you, but I'm one of the best puzzle solvers in the world. And so I'm like, I'm going to help you figure out what your puzzle needs to look like. And I'm going to be really good at helping you find the pieces and understand when you're not walking the path. And so through that process, I created first the passions lesson. You know, it's so powerful because what you do is like, I'll ask somebody, they think passions like, oh, I love playing the guitar or being a doctor. And that's not really a passion. That is just how you're choosing to execute it, right? That's a title. Mm -hmm. The passion is, what is it that drives you about it? Why are you doing it? How does it fulfill you? How does it need to be really niche or specifically in order to be the ideal for you, right? Because you're a doctor. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you want to be like a pediatrician or do you want to be like an uh, orthoscope? Like you have your, your specialty, right? This I want to do this with these kind of patients and these are the patients and this experiences that are the best to me. And so we get really granular on the things that are the most important where nothing else is more important in your life. And when you know that, we use that to set goals, to make decisions, to fulfill you when something's missing. Those are the things you should lean into if you're not feeling fulfilled in your life. And so the beginning process is getting that map created. So we can say, these are the things to fulfill me. Go, great then. What do you want to do about this? Like you want to change your career? Let's start building a career that has to do with this. How do you make this a lifestyle? How do you have these five top passions become a daily part of your life? How do you integrate them into your relationship? And it becomes a lens that we look through. And so it's it's um, there's structured steps we go through, like different lessons we do with the, with every person, but they're unique to every person because the content is different. Some person wants to be a doctor, some person wants to be a photographer, some person wants to you know like open a nonprofit. So it's a totally different path, but we have to answer these questions. Otherwise, um, there's not a direction to go, and people don't understand a framework to fit it into. That makes sense.
makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. I think one of the things that I found just in and of myself and in, in trying different programs and, and seeing what's going to land best for me is that if it's not through a lens of individuality, I tend to struggle like a lot in the group mm -hmm. programs. Whereas that's why when you had said one-on-one, -on -one, I said it, I, in my mind, I'm like, I think that has to happen mm -hmm. when someone's really trying to figure themselves out. The group programs, you just get lost in the weeds. Yeah. And trust me, it was a, it was a lot of work. It was a big, big goal to take on because, you know, I had so many clients I'm working with, you know, so it's like I had uh, 16 people plus a team of 11 people plus the whole event put on, but I was doing one-on-one. -on -one, so I was doing you know, 30 hours a week of coaching, 30, 40 hours a week of coaching, then everything else that goes outside of that, that was just the one-on-one -on -one sessions with people. Um, but the amount of uh, the momentum and the profound experience and results we got, you know, said it all. It was worth it in the end, but man, it's a lot. It's a lot when you're dedicated one-on-one -on -one with that many people to do it. But like you said, the work has to be specific to you. Otherwise, two things happen. The results you get become general and the person's not inspired to do the work because it doesn't seem like it's speaking to them. They start to believe like, maybe this won't work for me. But if I know specifically what you need and specifically where you want to go, then it ties your attention, your accountability. So you're so much more committed to doing and showing up. Hey, Health Junkies, if you're like me, you're always working on what you can do to achieve peak performance. Now, Brett is in the same game. He is here to help folks. And really, what I love about Brett Hellman is that he is all about personalized coaching, really helping you dial in on the things that you need the most help with like focusing on the synergy of the mind, the body and the spirit and really helping you understand your purpose and how you can use that purpose for good and to light you up in life. And this is really where I see a lot of group programs and other self-help programs and books falling short. There's that lack of personalization and Brett really has this down. So if you wanna know how you can get in on working with Brett, even if it's a one day retreat like his Breath House retreats or a multi-day like the Action Mastery retreats, head over to my podcast notes at drjkrausnd.com and click the link to find out more. All right, let's get back to the podcast. Yeah, the further along in my journey, the more I am seeking out one-on-one -on -one type of things. Mm -hmm. I do find that, you know, yeah, of course it's going to cost more, but that the group programs I've done so many different things are I'm like, mm, it doesn't resonate. And then you just kind of fall off, you know, yeah. and, and there isn't that one-on-one -on -one connection with someone. Now, along those lines, I'm super curious if in any of your work with one-on-one -on -one folks, if you found it's carried over to the family members husband, wife, oh, kids. It's, yeah, it's so funny you say that. Like, so two things on that. Number one, I absolutely love. It's one of my favorite things when I work with somebody and they start sharing with me how it's affecting their family. Because I tell people, I'm like, look, I'm coaching you. I have a lot of like, most of my people are high performing executives. And I go, listen, share this with your wife, share this with your husband, teach this to your kids, teach them meditation, teach them the breath work. And I have clients right now, I just had a conversation yesterday with one of my clients and said his little four-year-old daughter came running in the morning. He's like, daddy, daddy, it's breath work time. Let's breathe, let's breathe together. You know, and so the whole family start doing it. And the other thing is um, right now, I, I typically only work with 12 to 15 clients at a time. I try to keep that because of the level of engagement that I have. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so right now I have 13 clients and all of them have children. And the funny thing is many of them are families. They start out as an individual client. Like I have a male executive and he brought in his, his business partner. He brought in his wife. And now I'm working with the wife and I'm working with the kid. And I end up having the whole families as clients. Um, because they're like, help them with this. I, I care so much about my family member. And I've seen what it's done for me. So now help them. So I have a lot of families out there. And like, I feel like I'm I'm part of everybody's family, which is wonderful. But it's always a family affair. <laughs> sure. sure. Now, I wanted you to bring that up because I think it's important for folks to hear that. Because I, mm -hmm. when, when you go into investing in yourself, mm -hmm. and a lot of people will look at the money and go, oh, I don't know, you know. Yeah. But it's for your whole family, really. That's for your whole life. For your whole life. I, I can guarantee, like I said, like, I love what I do. This is no, not being braggadocious. I, you know, I, this is not about me. It's like these tools and technology are things that exist. It's just helping people heal themselves or find their own path. But the thing is, is what you learn, like I have clients call me that worked with me 17 years ago. I had a guy hit me up two, three weeks ago and said, Hey, I've been talking to you in 15 years. Just want to let you know, I'm still meditating every day. My kids that were five and six that were doing this stuff are now 16 and 17. You know, and they're like, they're still doing this. They're going like they're top of their school, top of their class. These things are forever. You know, it's like 
really the thing is, is if you see the value, like you know this, but if you see the value in what, what you're going to get, then it's in perpetuity. You know, you do the work, you're going to have it forever. It's not like you're going to forget how to meditate or forget how to um, organize your business with the structure that we did. It's tools that you can use. It's not like we're standing and just cheering in a big stadium and trying to pump you up. We're doing work, you know? Right, right. I think a lot of folks, and myself included, might be very curious in terms of, okay, you're talking about multiple clients. I know myself, uh, you know, when my patient load gets heavier, it's somewhat of a juggle to yeah. also take care of myself and keep my mind from not holding on to some of the things that have been said or shared or, or whatnot mm -hmm. in, in my sessions. What are some of the little things that you do to kind of reset yourself just so you can give us a little bit of peel back of the curtain in terms of what you're doing, just, just to give us a little sense? Yeah, I'm I'm a kind of obsessed. This is where my addiction is. Luckily, I don't have addictions like smoking or drinking or anything, but my addiction is personal growth, <laughs> if you couldn't tell. Um, but so I'm very disciplined. I'm insanely disciplined. And so I have a daily routine that I do. And I, I can't even tell you the last time I didn't do it, maybe 10 years ago. Um, it's evolved. But I get up every morning, first thing in the morning, I raise up, I get up before sunrise. because I like to watch the sunrise every morning. And I go and the first thing I do is I come into this temple, this sacred space I have where this is where I come to do my work. And it's a place where it's just positivity. But I sit down and I first just kind of observe myself, take a few minutes and kind of just take note of how I'm feeling, how I'm thinking, how I'm breathing. So that I can take note of like, how is life going along? How are the decisions I'm making right now showing up before I affect them or regulate them? Then I do a little breath work. Breath work gets me into good mindset, brings me present, makes me feel good physiologically. and does all these other amazing things. But then I meditate. I meditate to clear my mind, to let me focus, to reduce the noise, and to allow my mind to get inspired for the day. And then I have a process that I teach all my clients called QP1, or quantum yeah. programming, which is basically programming your brain, your mind, to focus on the things you want so you can be, do, and have the life you want. And so what that happens is after the meditation is I basically read over my passions. So it inspires me. It gets my mind focused on the things that are most important to me in life. So I'm like, oh, this is how I want to show up today. This is who I want to be today. These are the things I want to check off today. And then I do a list of affirmations, which are you know the direct statements of like, I am this. I'm doing this. This is who I am. And it helps. I think about like I'm building myself up every single day, piece by piece. And after I get done with that, because that's all a little you know, heady, I go to gratitudes. And I put together a gratitude list, the things I'm grateful for right now, the family members, the amazing people in my life, the opportunities, God's blessings all these different things. And it brings me back to my heart. So that when I go out for the day, I'm leading with my heart. I'm open. I'm empathetic to others. I'm kind. I'm grounded. Um, and then I go out and I take my dog for a run and I go to the Joe, oh, actually, sorry to back up after I finish that before the dog run, I go and I take a freezing cold ice bath. I do three minute ice bath every day. Uh, mm -hmm. then I take my dog for a run and then I go to the gym and work out while I listen to an audio book. And that's every single day from like about five 30 till about uh, eight 30 or nine every day. That's just my sacred time for me. Wow. Wow. And no matter what, even while traveling, sim very similar, obviously. There's Sometimes <laughs> there's a little modification, like because there may be things be constricted, like maybe I have to shorten the amount of time, but I check every box every single day. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. That's impressive. I know not a lot of folks can, can check all the boxes like that on a consistent basis. It takes some time. Um, and of course, dedication too. Now, over the years, I'm sure you've tried certain things and you've, you know, accepted ones that you're like, yeah, I totally am going to keep doing that. Other things you're like, yeah, not, not really helping. I'd love to hear like what you've kind of weeded out and been like, yeah, it's not quite as much of a, a help for me. Mm. I don't have to think about that one for a minute. What if I weed it out? I can tell you is, is a, a kind of like a, in, gen, in general is something that, you know, I, as a, as a more of an attitude that I've weeded out, which is ever allowing things to stress me. I know that sounds really simple, but like so many times you're like, oh, I got to do this diet. I'm on this diet. Oh, I missed a day. I messed this thing up. The whole purpose of everything we do, the morning routine, meditation, doing a certain diet, exercising, everything we do is to make ourselves healthier and to make ourselves happier, to bring us present in the moment. So the last thing I do is I used to get stressed if I didn't get up and get my routine going. Or mm -hmm. if I was on, I was traveling and a part of it had to be shortened. Or if I couldn't work out that day or couldn't go to the gym and do as great of a workout as I wanted. And I've let all of that go. Because listen, it's, of course you want to show up every day. But the content is not as important as showing up for yourself. If you show up and have the right attitude, you could say one word and be fantastic for the day. 
like I said, I'm obsessed with it because I know the power of it. I'm able to move things. It's what I do for a living. So there's the integrity of it, but also I just understand that the nuances of how I can advance it and really take advantage of it. But I tell people, don't sweat it. If you join the gym and you miss a day, it's okay. If you stress out over missing the day, you're releasing cortisol and adrenaline in your body and you're unhealthy dumping your body and putting yourself in fight or flight and you're totally messing up the whole thing that you've been trying to do. So what I've let go of is stressing and worrying about things. And what I've embraced is surrendering to the process and loving myself, just being kind. Everything that happens is happening for a reason. If I don't feel like it today, fine. What do I feel like doing today? I always make a healthy choice. I'm not going to say, I don't feel like doing things. So let's lay on the couch and watch soaps all day and eat a bag of Doritos. <laughs> um, but I will say, hey, guess what? I don't feel like the gym today. That's okay. Maybe I'll take a walk outside. And so what I've let go of is feeling that the disciplines need to be something that that judge me or make me feel like I'm doing something wrong. And so that's what I've let go of is the attitude of just pressure and stress and the have tos. You know, unless something is urgent, like somebody's going to die, nothing matters. All that matters is your happiness and that you stay focused and present because you'll always get where you need to go. That is some seriously wise advice. It's incredible how much we can stress ourselves out over the little things. And for a lot of what I hear from patients is, is that stress mode they go into when they're like, I missed the gym. I couldn't find organic chicken at the store. You know what I mean? Just right. whatever. I had to regular you. bananas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to die. You know, it's, it's things like that. And I mean, I, I'd be lying if I said that that didn't happen to me too. Sometimes, you know, when things build up or like, you know, different things are, are making me feel stressed. And, and I think as, as it's human, right. I, and yeah. to, to feel that, like, I, I need to be stressed about this. It's almost like we've been conditioned o over the years. And I, I'm sure we have to mm -hmm. feel stressed because we've seen our parents or grandparents or some, you know, some movie of someone being stressed about, yeah. And it's also, Janine, I'm sure you know this, but like, you know, this is why I'm so passionate about breath work right now. And, you know, most people think like, oh, I breathe all the time. What is that? Or they don't understand it. But the thing is, is we breathe incorrectly as a society. And the breath that you take in, the way you breathe activates your physiology and activates your psychology. So like most of us go around over breathing, right? Like they say, like healthy breathing is between five to eight breaths a minute, like inhale, exhale. Mm -hmm. The average person is doing 15 to 30. So you're doing two to three times the amount of breathing you should do all the time. And so like, what is a panic attack? A panic attack is like <laughs> over breathing and you get yourself anxious. And so the thing is, any level of over breathing is starting to cause some level of anxiety or panic. And unfortunately, because of our bad behaviors and then because of, you know, maybe the things we're eating, the stress in our life, it, it, it aggravates it. But we go around almost anxious all the time. Almost everybody's anxious at some level. So the thing is, is it's not really necessarily that I can't get the organic bananas it's that I'm already just anxious. So anything you give me, oh, I, that person parked in my parking spot. Oh, they got in front of me at the door. Oh, I wanted to answer the call and the call dropped it. Everything just goes to level 11. It's like, ah, ah, it's all this panic. And it's like, none of it matters. None of that stuff matters. You know, what matters is what you put in front of you and you focus on. Everything else is just an activity. It's just an action. It's an opportunity to grow and learn or it doesn't matter at all. And so I really find that when we help people retrain and kind of turn this inside out, and say, just stop for a moment and breathe. Just breathe, just calm down, take a breath, think about what you're grateful for, and then think about what you wanna be doing. All of a sudden you're like, I don't remember what I was worried about. And it's like, well, a minute ago it was the end of the world and now you can't even remember it. You know, but I'll tell you, Janine, the hardest thing, and it's funny because my most of my clients will come to me and I teach them how to meditate and how to get, you know, focused and to calm down so we can kind of be in a positive flow state. And, uh, They'll tell me, I don't have time to meditate. They'll just tell me they hated their life, hate their business, unhappy, healthy, can't go on, don't know what they're going to do if this doesn't work. And I'll say, well, let me teach you how to meditate for five minutes. Like, I don't have time for that. I'm like, is that because you have to rush to the life that you hate? <laughs> uh, and then after a week, they start doing it and they go, uh, most people in three to four days go, I can't believe this. I can't believe how different I feel. I've never felt this good. My family members are like, what's up with you? Their employees are all telling them like something shifted in you. And it's so simple. It's such a God-given gift and it's natural to all of us. But I think that's really it is we just go around. We don't realize how kind of on edge we are all the time. Mm -hmm.
Mm -hmm. I've been there. I've been there. Yeah. I mean, you, you get l late with your schedule. You've got patients, you know, I need this medication. I need this. I need that. And you're like, ah. I, <laughs> you know, you just feel like everybody, you know, everybody's emergency is your emer emergency event. And, and it, you know, really isn't. And that's the crazy mind trick. Like you said, yeah. with folks is really being able to shut that off and just be like, it's going to yeah. happen when it does. Yeah. And, and not, and, and this is one of the things that I'll just call myself out and, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this is, and also not feeling guilty mm -hmm. or for being like, I'm going to take a minute to myself before. Yeah. I yeah. Do something. Most everybody that's a parent, you know, um, cause like we develop really healthy routines and things to get people on track. And sometimes they're dealing with major issues, major psychological issues or health issues. And they're still putting everyone else first, even at the detriment of themselves. I'm like, you're the one taking care of them. We got to get you healthy. And they don't want to break the habit of like, you got to put the mask on yourself, right? Like you're going to die and you're going to not be here for them. And, and I get it. It's very um, honorable to have that much giving in you, but we have to make time for ourselves. I always say like, you know, I don't want to spend any day where I don't show up as the best version of myself or that I didn't have the intention of it. Cause I don't, you know, it's like, I'm always doing the best I can and that's the best I can do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I always kind of joke and say that every mindset we have when you're angry, when you're sad, when you're depressed, when you're anxious, it's a different version of me. It's a different Brett. And I would never hire the angry Brett to do my business. I never hired the sad Brett to go on a date or to go out and network. So it's like, so why are we constantly choosing to have them to be the ones go out and do stuff? So do what you can to get that person out of the way and get the person that's best for the job back on track. Mm, wow. That's, that's, where were you like 20 years ago? Because <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking like, you know, who I, I, I laugh at it because it's like, man, mer multiple personalities that each of us have, right? Like you were saying like the sad brat versus the angry brat. If I look at like, you know, like the anxious gene versus the chill gene versus, you know, and you're like, man, if I could just control how I show up each day, there wouldn't be all these variables. Yeah. There wouldn't be all these Things. A lot less collateral damage. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, seriously. So you've given us a really great idea of of what your your personalized retreats are like, and and the coaching and the level of care that you give. You've also talked quite a bit about the ideal you program. Kind of thinking, what could we what could we leave folks with to really kind of understand how vitally important this is if you're noticed if, if you're committed you want to change you don't know what to do in terms of next steps you're looking at a couple different programs you're trying to figure out who's who's the guy for me who should I work with what what can we tell them what can we show them what can we say so what I'll do which I love and thank you for this this is great I what I will do is I'd like to leave some everybody with a technique mm -hmm. that will that will literally change your life it'll improve your life very quickly. And so I'll give you two steps for it. It's really simple. So there's a breathing technique that I'm going to share with you because okay. you're going to use this breathing technique inside of the little, inside the little uh, lesson that I give you. So it's a simple breathing technique called four, two, six. And all it is, is you're going to inhale through your nose for four seconds. Then you're going to hold the air at the top for two seconds. And then you're going to exhale for six seconds. The reason we do this is anytime you exhale longer than you inhale, your body relaxes and calms. And that's what most people need. We don't need to be activated. We need to be able to calm. So it would just be like a. Nice and simple. Four, two, six. So two things you can do with that. Number one is I would challenge anybody to put a little alarm in your phone. We all have smartphones. Set an alarm for four hours from right now that says check your breathing. And in four hours, when it pops off, just kind of pay attention to how you're breathing. Do you feel anxious? How do you feel? And then set it for one minute and do that breathing technique, 426 for one minute. And then reset the alarm again for four hours later. Do this for a week, do it at least twice a day and see how you feel differently. You will be a completely different person. The other thing I will give you that also includes that technique is a, is a process I do called take five and come back better. This one's good for yourself, and it's also good for your employees, people you're working with, your, your partner, your husband, wife, et cetera. Um, anytime you realize that you're not behaving the way you want, let's say you're arguing with your husband or your wife, and you realize you're not doing well, you say to the other person, you know what, honey, I'm going to take five and come back better. I want to clear my head. You know, I want to come back and be positive. You leave the environment because you have to get out of that environment where the energy's at. 
-hmm. take a walk, get outside, just go someplace else. Doesn't matter where you go. Just don't stay there. Go outside, do the same thing I just talked about. The first thing you do is find a quiet place, sit down and do a minute or two of that breathing four to six and just breathe. What happens is emotions are a signal. They're God given gift. They're telling us something we need to do when you're angry. It's telling you something you need to change because you're your morals or ethics are being challenged. When you're sad, there's something missing in your life. When you're fearful, there's a knowledge you don't have. So emotions are trying to help you. So you step outside and do this 426 method for a minute or two. It will allow you in a healthy way to process the emotion instead of repressing it. That way you learn the lesson it's trying to give you. And once you feel you're like, oh, two minutes, like I don't feel angry anymore. Then you ask yourself these two questions. First one is, how is this helping me? How is this anger right now? How is acting like this helping me? And the second question is, what am I supposed to learn from this experience? Like maybe to be patient, maybe be a better listener, maybe be empathetic, maybe be kinder to my partner. And that is the work to go do. Whatever comes out is the work to go do. And those two techniques alone, I guarantee it's really, you could take that and probably improve yourself, your life 50% right now. Your relationships will improve, your patience, your, you won't have as many problems to try to fix that you created. <laughs> But those two things I think are great. And then what it do is it give you clarity, it'd give you peace of mind, inner peace, and give you clarity on where you really need to work instead of all the things you're creating that are problems that don't really exist outside of your creation. And then you can determine who to go to and what you need because it'll be more authentic and more, you know, refined. Makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, the the creating problems. Boy, that is that is a deep one and, and a big one for a lot of folks and a lot of them that are don't have to be created. So if we can kind of find that clarity, take that peaceful time out, huge. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys listening, but definitely I'm sure you've seen this, Brett. Like anytime I do the longer exhale than the inhale, I'm all with my shoulders always are like, ah. Yeah, and everything just drops, right? It's so nice. It feels so good. I, I have these things I call mountaintop breaths. I do all these different kind of like, you know, techniques and different sessions and stuff like I mentioned earlier with people. And I'll go like at the retreat. I was like, we'd be up standing in the top of a palapa overlooking the jungle out to the ocean. I was like, let's take in a bunch of mountaintop breaths. And to me, that's like when you inhale and it's like when you come down on like Thanksgiving morning and someone's making an apple pie or pumpkin pie, or you get to the top of the mountain, it smells so good. You just want to smell it all there. You're like, it's, oh. and it just, if your whole body almost tangles. And so I do those as much as I can every day. I just stop. And especially in moments when things are good. You know, um, I just stop for a moment, just take in one of those mountaintop breaths. I'm, I just reach the top, the pinnacle and take a moment to enjoy it because you really only have the now. And we get too caught up in the stress of the past and the worries or fretting over the future. And you miss this moment. That's why I talk about showing up as the best version of you. If you're always out there thinking about what you're doing in a year from now or what you want to have, or you're worried about the mistakes you had, you're never here. You miss all the moments. You're never the best version of yourself if you're not in the moment. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's true. It's true. I'm like, okay, how can folks get in the moment with you? Like on your next retreat, where's your next retreat? Where so I have a couple of things going on. So I actually, uh, what I started doing too, because not everybody can get away for a week and not everyone can uh, fly to Tulum. So what I started doing is I'm now got a thing called breath house. I do as well. So my retreats are called action mastery. That's the retreats. And then there's individual ones. Like the awakening is the first one you go to, to start the process. The ascension is the second one where you go to the next level, but um, and so I have those are next year. So March of next year will be the Ascension and November of next year, 2025 will be the Awakening. But in between then, I developed one day retreats that are called Breath House. It's a whole new innovation on breath work. It's a one day retreat for about six to nine hours where we get together and we do group coaching for a couple hours. I did the same thing as before. I have a month of group coaching leading up. So you get to work with me ahead of time. Then we get to the event, you do group coaching there. We do some Kundalini yoga or body work do sound healing, we do a breath work journey, and then we have a deep high, deep house tribal music kind of celebration. So the whole day is about raising your frequency, your vibration, and working together through all these things. And so uh, I'm doing them all around Vegas. I'm just going to be start touring the U.S. very soon here. Um, and so really, you can just search Breath House. Anybody can go. They can look at my website, brettballman.com, or you can just go to breath-house.com and look it up. Or look up Brett and Breath House, and you'll find it. And really, if you join, I think the great thing is people to join me on my, my uh, Facebook page, because that's where I, everything you can, you'll never miss a single thing I do. And that is just facebook.com forward slash action mastery tribe. And everything you'd want is in there, plus connecting with me and my team, you know, and I'm really passionate about it. If somebody wants something, you're going to hear from me. I'm going to get your resources. I don't leave you hanging. Like, 
I love it when people have the courage to take the first step. And I always want to make sure that can, they continue that momentum. Yeah. It's so, it's so vital. It's so vital to do that and catch them at the moment. So glad mm -hmm. that you're active in the Facebook groups. Cause unfortunately that is one of the things I do see that usually once someone gets in into a career enough, you end up having the admins really monitoring things versus yeah. you. So that's yeah, I'm to a fault. I'm engaged in there. <laughs> well, you know, I think, I think there's something to be said about it and, and really having that connection with folks because you're who created it. So yeah. Yeah. It's important. My goodness. Good stuff. Guys, we'll have everything over at drjkrausnd.com. So, because he just gave us all kinds of different names and things. And ultimately, the biggest takeaway in my head was if you can't leave the country because you're just too busy, most of us can get into Las Vegas really easy. So, yeah. <laughs> especially if we're in the States, easy, easy peasy to get in there. So, that's good stuff. Wow. Well, I look forward to diving more into your retreats. I look forward to checking out more stuff and sharing it with my audience. Thank you so much, Brad, for coming on. I really appreciate you sharing all your wise information. I got to I gotta try out those tips you gave us. I got to hit rewind and try it again. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Jean. Thank you so much for having me on. This is a real pleasure and I uh, really enjoyed the conversation. You're welcome. Hey, Health Junkies, if you're like me, you're always working on what you can do to achieve peak performance. Now, Brett is in the same game. He is here to help folks. And really, what I love about Brett Bauman is that he is all about personalized coaching, really helping you dial in on the things that you need the most help with, like focusing on the synergy of the mind, the body, and the spirit, and really helping you understand your purpose and how you can use that purpose for good and to light you up in life. And this is really where I see a lot of group programs and other self-help programs and books falling short. There's that lack of personalization, and Brett really has this down. So if you want to know how you can get in on working with Brett, even if it's a one-day retreat like his Breath House retreats or a multi-day like the Action Mastery retreats, head over to my podcast notes at drjkrausnd.com and click the link to find out more. Hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix Podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.